How are you guys? Uh, Mudsy here from Muay Thai Interviews again. And uh, my next guest is, uh, you may know him from his Facebook page as The Sentimental Bear. I'm here with the man behind the camera who brings you those awe-inspiring goosebumps inflicting Muay Thai videos. It makes you feel like you're there with, while watching his videos without even being there. I'm joined by Tom Gathercole. How are you, bud? Uh, good, mate. Pleasure to speak with you, Mudsy. Mate, pleasure to... Pleasure to talk to you, the man behind the camera. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, you started Taekwondo uh, 20 years ago, and you did that for a while. Uh, you took a bit of a break for a few years, and then you found Muay Thai and MMA. Can you tell us where and how your uh, martial arts journey all began, bud? Yeah, sure, mate. So, uh, yeah, when I was about nine years old, my mum, she was looking for a sport for me and my sister to do, and, you know, keep us, uh, we'll waste all our energy on, I suppose, and and I think we she first took us to gymnastics, um, which I personally loved, you know, doing all the flips and all the girls everywhere and everything, that was that was great, <laughs> but uh, my sister didn't like it, so we ended up going to Taekwondo, and, and that's kind of where all my martial arts started, um, spent a few years there, and then, like a typical Aussie kid, I got into footy. Um, wasn't too good at footy though, <laughs> oh, let's be honest, but there was a couple of uh, tiffs on the footy field that tend to happen, especially in country footy, yeah. and uh, my teammates said, you're better at that than, uh, than footy, mate, so <laughs> during pre-season, I kind of went down my a local MMA gym and, and just never went back, like, just fell in love with it, and then through MMA, just absolutely fell in love with Muay Thai, and and yeah, six or seven years down the track, I'm here and I'm filming Muay Thai and just loving it. So, so how old were you when you first started or got into MMA? I was 20. Yeah. Um, yeah, so actually time flies. So that's eight years, uh, which blows me away. Um, but yeah, just just got into MMA and, you know, I, I think I, I'm not a super experienced campaigner but I've had two MMA fights and then then got into Muay Thai and I've had about 16 MMA, uh, I mean Muay Thai fights and and then yeah into the filming now like just the passion of filming and then of uh, martial arts just getting to mix those two is really cool. Yeah and um, I, I for me I find for myself that's often one of my biggest regrets because I found Muay Thai probably in my mid-twenties and, um, yeah, I fell in love with it straight away. And I just think, man, I wish I found it when I was in my teenager years, you know? Yeah, I completely understand. Like, as soon as I realised, all right, well, I'm not going to be a world champion or anything like that, um, I started to think, well, what are other avenues that I can take to still be involved with the sport when one day I won't be able to compete? Um, and... So, yeah, got into the filming side of it, which is really cool. Well, that's why I decided to do these interviews, because that's the way for me to give back, because I know I'm, I've only had a few fights, but I've only, I realise I'm probably not going to be that great at it, but I just still love training and just fell in love and, and passionate with it. The first time I walked into Andy's gym, mate, I was just, by the end of it, I was just completely drenched in sweat. Looked like I just <laughs> jumped out of a swimming pool, and I was completely fucked, and I was like, well, what's this, man? I've never ever felt like this after any type of workout ever and i was like if i'm get, if i'm gonna pay money to to go to like you know go to the gym lift weights or or do something i'm like i want to do this because that's how i want to feel every time after i've finished having a workout yeah it's, it's it really is the ultimate uh you know you have a lot of other you know people like you people walking in like other footy players or people that think they're pretty fit and a couple of rounds on the pads and you're done <laughs> Yeah, especially like you get like the, it's funny when you see like the big guys come in from footy or whatever and, they, and they're clinching and they just get owned by skinny guys. Keeps them, Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> keeps, keeps them humble, keeps them humble. Um, That's right. So um, what made you start to want to capture um, Muay Thai um, and the people involved on camera? Well, I saw... Firstly, that it really was a, a side of the scene that wasn't really getting covered. Um, and, you know, there's a market for it in a way. Like, 
everyone loves the fights, but also, you know, there's all the stuff that goes on backstage that we want to see, but no one was doing it really, um, well, especially down here in Melbourne. So I started doing that, but it all, it all actually honestly started. I did my knee, and I couldn't uh, train, So, but I still wanted to be part of the club, obviously, and so I'm, I was going along to the fights, and, and I thought, well, I'm in the corner. Might as well film it for the boys, just because obviously, you know, as a, when you're fighting, you want to see it straight away to critique or, you know, post online or whatever. But yeah, so I started doing that, and then I, I kind of, it just snowballed. Yeah, it just snowballed from there. So, did you ever um, take any courses or or do anything, or did you sort of just figure out figure it out as you went along? Yeah, well. I, I ended up um, going to film school uh, after find, oh, finding this this uh, newfound passion, I suppose, because I'm kind of a all-in kind of guy. So, you know, I I really got into uh, competing and training, and yeah. then when I got injured and I couldn't do that, then I started filming and I really got into that. So, I made a few things and got a good reaction, which was really nice. And then I thought well, let's chase it and see where I can go with that. And, and obviously I wasn't up to scratch from what I want, had in my head. I couldn't do it yet. So I've just, just been making things every weekend basically ever, ever since. And, yes, yeah, so I went to film school and I, I finished a year and a half ago and, yeah, now I'm trying to, trying to survive. <laughs> well, it's, well, that's your, uh, your finished products are definitely showing there, mate. Um, so how did, you, how did you come up with the name The Sentimental Bear? Yeah, well... Well, my auntie, she always, I lived with my auntie for a while and she always joked that um, I was a bear, uh, that was my spirit animal, because <laughs> she, she said that um, I was all cute and cuddly, but I could also be a little bit grumpy, and um, and I also, um, I used to hibernate as well, so I'd go into my room and, and I'd be mostly editing but then I'd come out, so like a bear, I'd hibernate as well, so that was kind of funny. And then this, the sentimental side of it, um, well, I just thought it was funny because a bear, um, it's kind of a contrast. It's not <laughs> usually the temperament of a, of a bear. But, but I honestly just made the page to kind of, because I had a lot, of other, uh, a lot of people adding my personal page on Facebook, and I just kind of just thought, well, this is my personal page, so I better make something. I just came up with it on the fly, and, and yeah. Got quite a few likes now, buddy. Yeah, yeah, well, it's slowly uh, creeping up there, especially when I get great opportunities to, you know, film awesome fighters, you know, like, you know, Jun and, and all the guys at Sitman Chai, and, you know, you got Sam Bark, and recently made a really cool thing with Toby at the main event of rebellion so that was really cool and so yeah it's slowly growing which is great so what was the first video that you ever did um well when i was 12 i used to make videos of pro wrestling to try to prove to my friends that it was real <laughs> um, so that was probably my first editing experience um but yeah pretty much i would just I think the first one I made was of my teammate uh, Sims. We were scheduled to fight on the same card, and my opponent pulled out, and I was still going. So I decided, oh well, I still want to go, and um, yeah, filmed filmed his fight, and and then uh, yeah, just snowballed from there. So which is really cool. So um, sorry, just getting off topic a little bit. What was what gym did you train at when in Muay Thai in in Melbourne? Yeah, well, I trained at uh, Kimikai MMA, so um, they're primarily an MMA gym, um, but we'll do any rules kind of thing, and yeah. so I've fallen out, like I've gone down the, the striking path, I've fallen in love with that side of the MMA, um, but I still train there, and I still love it, and, and my coach, Ed, there, he's, he's uh, very passionate about Muay Thai as well, so it's really cool, and yeah. Sweet. So, so, there. It's great. so you still train at the moment while you're making videos as well? Yeah, well, honestly, uh, since I've been back from Thailand, uh, I haven't been training as much 
Um, but I'm hoping to ramp it up again, and you know, I've still got a few left in me. So yeah, yeah, um, still training. And mate, while while you're when you're fighting, do you ever get anyone to to capture your fights? Yeah, well, it's usually um, I don't have that much footage of my of my own fights, um, but it was funny. I, I I did make a video of Willie, and we made a deal that if I filmed his fight, he would film mine at, at Max. So I've got um, you know, every now and again, someone will film for me. And and speaking of Willie. Uh, the first time I actually saw one of your videos was one you did of Willie Whipple a couple of years ago at Max. Uh, that was where you went behind the scenes and you captured everything. Man, I thought it was amazing and it, and it gave me goosebumps every time. Can you tell us about that? Because that's where I actually first found out about you when I had a chat with Willie. Uh, that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you liked that. That was a, a fun video, you know. Uh, Willie's such an awesome fighter and really, really nice dude. Um, yeah, no, I was at Max, uh, well, Willie's regularly fighting on Max, um, yeah. still is, and because I was training with the guys at Sitman Chai, I, I was just getting in the van every weekend, going to the fights, and, well, yeah, that, that fight was an absolute war, as all Willie's fights are, um, and yeah, I just try my best to capture what happens backstage. I think there's a slight advantage in that I, uh, you know, have an understanding of the feelings that are actually happening because um, yeah. I've been through them so I feel like yeah that's an advantage in a way and um, yeah I'm really glad you liked it oh mate loved it that, that's a, that's an understatement um, and another video I really liked was um, you did one of Montian Sitman Chai um, and there was also another one you did, I think you've done two maybe with uh, Mr. Knock, Thepnamit. I really like that one too, where you've captured him warming up and walking to the ring um, with their capes. It seems as though you have a special affiliation with the Sitman Chai Gym. Can you tell us how long uh, that's been going on for and, and how that all came about? Uh, those guys are so awesome. Yeah, I, I first, when uh, the Rebellion promoter Sai, he brought, he was bringing... Uh, uh, John Over, um, and he did a seminar. So I came along to the seminar and I met him there. So that was my first encounter with Sitman Chai. And then Willie came over to Sydney to fight, and I met Willie backstage. And I thought, like, every time I've met someone from this gym, oh no, and the twins came over oh, yeah. um, to Melbourne. So Tia and, and, and Patch, they came over as well. So I met those guys, and I thought, every time I've met someone from this gym, like, I just feel like we click, so when I met Willie, he said, well, I said to him, I, I've never been to Thailand, I'd love to go over, um, and he said, well, you should contact Abigail, so I messaged Abigail and and um, said that I was interested in coming over, and um, so we worked out an awesome win-win, uh, best win-win I've ever had, yeah. where I went over and, you know, they gave me place to stay and they fed me and they looked after me and, and I just made content and followed their boys and tried to give a bit of exposure to the gym and so I was just over there living the dream making videos and training and, and had a couple of fights while I was there as well and and yeah they were just so great to me they were really really good and I can't wait to get back there again well you and me both mate but I think you'll be getting over there a lot quicker than I do with work and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um did you hear, speaking of um, Montian, did you hear he got jumped by four guys probably, I think, last month while he was out with his girlfriend in Kanchanaburi and got stabbed? <laughs> yeah, I did see that. Jesus, these ties, they're brutal, eh? <laughs> I'm glad he's okay, though. I was pretty worried, you know. I saw Willie put something up that he was in hospital, and then, geez, yeah. the scars are massive when I saw the photo, so I'm really happy that he's all right. Yeah. It's a bit of a worry, but, yeah. <laughs> it's not just Australia, it's pretty... mate. It's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and and when you do make a video of a particular person or fighter, for example, have you got a vision in mind before you make it, or does it sort of just all unfold as you're just putting it together? Yeah, well, honestly, um, I honestly just go there and try to be a fly in the wall and capture what happens, um, and then I go home and 
I run off inspiration a bit too much, but I just kind of let it run where it goes. Um, I obviously have a structure and everything like that, um, like a basic structure, but yeah, I just kind of let my creativity, how I feel, go and try my best to make people's hair stand up on the back of their their necks and and really kind of give really pay tribute to what actually happened and and the fighters and and show everyone like at home like what actually happened because uh, sometimes you know you can watch something but it's not the same like you, as you're there and I and it'll never be as the same as you're there but I'm trying to get as close as I can to that well you certainly are mate if if uh I definitely think you are anyway and Thanks. and and say um, for example, like a two minute highlight reel, how many hours would you spend putting that together? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's, it takes so long, especially like when you break it down. So if you just say I'm doing a highlight of someone with 50 fights, that means I have to watch 50 fights and then cut it up. And then and I reckon I would go through that fight you know, five times each. So you just got to add up the minutes there. It's We're talking, you know, 60, 70. It depends how many fights, obviously. But I spend a lot of time, especially because, you know, I, I'm pretty – I refuse to put something crap out. So I'll yeah. just take the extra time if, if I have to because I want to really pay tribute to that person. Just say I'm doing a highlight on someone. I really want to, you know, show everyone how good they are. I don't want to just put something out with a couple of highlights. So, yeah. Okay, sweet as. And um, can I can I make a selfish request for myself? Next time that you're in Bangkok um, at one of the big stadiums, can you make a video capturing the gamblers going ape shit? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I already have. You know, I spent five months at Simon Chai, and you know, that's little things like that are, are special. <laughs> They're very special. Those those uh, gamblers just go off, don't they? I mean, smoke you... gambling. You know yourself. Sometimes, like you can just instead of watching the fights, like you can just sit there and just watch the gamblers going crazy. And I get goosebumps every time that happens because you, you won't find that anywhere else in the world. Yeah, it, it really is something else. Yeah, so there's a lot of little things like that that I've actually been saving and putting in my archives because because I'm actually working on a documentary. I've been for a couple of years, and and so you know I'll I'll film an event and. Uh, selfishly uh, keep all the good stuff to myself so you know everyone will see that stuff but I'm just it's I'm working on this documentary so all right so have I, have I opened up something there have I oh no 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 <laughs> um, it's, it's it's just um, yeah I'm making a documentary uh, on fighters and why they fight and yeah. I've been working on it for a couple of years and and I've had a lot of support especially down here in Melbourne and you know everyone that uh, has been a part of uh, the process, and I did a little fundraiser that got me to the US as well, which is really cool. And and so, you know, it's been really great. It's been the, one of the most amazing experiences. Like, I started this little thing, this little documentary, <laughs> got like two years ago now, and it's just just turned into this huge, huge, awesome, you know, journey. And um, it's. I'm really looking forward to showing everyone what I've what I've got. So yeah, it's been amazing. So so uh, can I just keep sniffing around a little bit? Have you got like a time frame, like next year, the year after? Yeah, well, it it seems to be just keep getting bigger and bigger. Uh, but no, I'm I'm aiming for the end of the year to have a cut, and I'll and then I'll um, I'll do a a screening uh, for everyone that contributed um, here in Melbourne, and then um, I'll. I'll go to the. I'll try to find like a. A sports, uh, film competitions and stuff like that. I'll start entering, entering it into stuff like that and try give some exposure to everyone that's, given me their time and you know I, I've been so lucky. I, you know, went went to the U.S. and filmed a bunch of awesome MMA guys in L.A. and John Wayne Park gave me some time and spent a week with him. Also went to Perth for his. Uh, Daniel Dawson fight and now you know just went to sit and try for five, like five months and just got so much gold and 
went to Serbia. Like I've been to Japan as well. Like, I've been everywhere. So it's gonna it's gonna be something pretty awesome, and I'm really excited to show everyone what I've captured over the last few years. What a journey for myself as well, you know. Mate, I reckon you've probably got, in my opinion, one of the best jobs out there. You and probably like Rob Cox <laughs> get to go to Muay Thai, it's... especially Rob. Like he gets to go to Muay Thai, all the Muay Thai events in in Thailand basically for free. He gets to commentate, he gets to cover, he gets to watch them. Yeah, I reckon I'm jealous. <laughs> you know, it's a, absolutely it's it's a real privilege. You know, especially because I get to go into moments and that not everyone gets to see because they're they're very personal and so everyone that gives me those moments I'm very appreciative uh, and respectful of them as well and and I try my best to you know like I said show everyone with respect um, what happens uh, within the community and and yeah I'm just trying to learn every time and get better and and yeah, it's 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 a really good job, and like also, when I'm not doing that, like my own stuff, I've, I've been working broadcast too, like just on the side of the ring most weekends as well. When, and that's another side to it as well. So, you know, I'm I'm growing and and learning, and it's been really fun. Well, I didn't know about this other little project, mate, but I'm excited. You've got me excited. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to it by oh. the end of the year too. All right. Hey, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. <laughs> no. it, it takes so long. No, I'm only joking, mate. It's probably like a, it's probably like you know, like a project car. When everyone keeps saying, "Oh yeah, six months, six months," and give it another couple of years, she's she'll still be six months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it's too close to that. It is too close to that. But you know, I'm doing my best, and everyone's been really, really great um, to work with, and and it's just me as well. So you know, these things. They usually have huge crews and and big budgets and yeah and like I said before I, I refuse to put something out that's not of quality and so it'll unfortunately just take whatever time it takes but it'll be good by the time I get it done. Well, mate, uh, if you ever get real big and and you and you make it, I'll I'll um, let you pay me just to walk around and hold your cord. <laughs> yeah, you can be my assistant. <laughs> Uh, I'll be your bitch. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> so, um, in in saying like with your with your filming and stuff, how do you select your music when making a video? Do you have like a song in mind, um, and then you make the video around the music, or vice versa? Well, much like the editing process, it's it runs off inspiration a lot. Um, I my music style is much different than the usual style. And I think that's because I look at it a little bit differently than maybe some others, which I'm hoping gives a bit different look to Muay Thai. So I see Muay Thai as beautiful yeah. when I'm watching it. It's it's beautiful to me. And so I tend to put beautiful music with my highlights um, rather than your grunge or your heavy metal or something yeah. like that, which is pretty typical, usual style, which is, there's a place for that completely, you know. Maybe you don't want to highlight and you try to pump everyone up or whatever. But what I'm trying to show is the beauty of the sport. And and so, yeah, I usually use uh, music that I find beautiful because, yeah, Muay Thai is beautiful. Yeah, you know what it, you know what it reminds me of? Because um, that's why I wanted to ask you about your music. It reminds me of, like, um, you know, like when you're watching, like, um, Braveheart or, or Gladiator or something and the music you use and it's, like, it shows them, like, going into battle. That's, that's how I... Get, well, that's what comes across to me. The way you capture it is like you've got the highlight of someone or, or an event, and it shows all everything just like you know, slow motion, broken down, um, and it's just like it's got that music playing over it. Like we're going into battle, and something special has happened, and I'm and I'm capturing it. That well, that's that's what I get anyway. Yeah, well, they are. <laughs> they yeah. are going into battle, and and you know. I try to get music that builds because obviously a fight builds, um, and yeah, the, it's it is the closest we have in today's society because we don't live back then to battle, and it, it is real. It's real battle, and yeah, it's awesome. It, it sometimes, it, most of the time, it looks better. Your videos look better than when you're there at the actual events. <laughs> 
Well, that's because I have the best seat in the house, you know. I get to, you know, I'm right in the corner, I'm right under it, and often <laughs> I'm in the ring, but then they come over to me and I pull the camera out. Just the time. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky I, I can time it, but, yeah, still still no one stood on my camera yet. But, yeah, we're right in there when, I, when, I'm, when I'm capturing it. <laughs> Certainly are, dude. Um, and we sort of touched on it before, um, but you're also the master behind the Rebellion videos and highlights. How did you end up linking up with Cy and also Timo, who's who's come on board now to become an integral part of the Rebellion team? Yeah, well, Cy has like been so supportive of me the whole time. You know, I the first couple of events that I filmed, I, I just literally snuck in there and hit, snuck behind the the you know security and just filmed it um like even if when i was in serbia i pre- like if you if you act like often if you just act like you're supposed to be there you, you get through yeah <laughs> so i was in serbia didn't didn't speak the language and just said yeah australia media got in behind like <laughs> k1 fights and it was awesome <laughs> but yeah so you know first few events i had to sneak in there but the, the idea was well i'm just going to show everyone what i can do and then hopefully some opportunities come and well size just continually giving me opportunity after opportunity and Sorry guys, we just got a little cut off there, but we're we're back in action. And uh, Tommy was just telling us about uh, how Sai gave him the opportunity to work on Rebellion. Yeah, no, nah, Sai has just been giving me opportunity after opportunity, which has been really great. And you know, he he's been a full supporter of my work, and together we're trying to, you know, obviously expose how awesome the the scene is in Australia, and and keep and build it obviously as well. And and um, yeah, in fact, recently he just put me on um, full time, and we're going to be just producing heaps and heaps of content, and uh, try and and show everyone how awesome uh, Australian Muay Thai is. Well, mate, I'm thankful for people like you guys and Sai and and a lot of other people who are passionate about the sport as well. Um, and I've also seen on your Facebook page you're creating a Give Me More series. What's that all about, and what's the motivation behind that? Uh, well, they're going to be real rare. Um, well, maybe not. It depends, because the idea to those ones is basically I was at MX when uh, Sam Bark fought, I uh, can't remember the tie's name, but it was just an absolute war. Like I, I left buzzing, and... I've filmed that many fights that I still obviously love them and get into them, but rarely am I yelling behind the camera these days because like, I, I don't get too emotional um, while filming anymore, especially because if I get too emotional, I wreck my footage by yelling <laughs> and shaking the camera and stuff. Yeah. Uh, early days, because I only filmed my teammates in the early days, I used to wreck so much footage <laughs> by yelling and screaming. And, <laughs> but I, after Sam's fight on MX, uh, which was an absolute war, I was just so inspired that I made a special highlight uh, on that fight, and, um, and, and it was one of the best videos that, uh, well, the most successful, I suppose, uh, successfully viewed videos on my page, and it did really well. And 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 then so yeah, just recently, well, it's been a while since I've felt that feeling. But then Toby versus uh, Benko the other weekend weekend at Rebellion 18 um, was just an absolute war, and I just was buzzing. I couldn't sleep after the fight. It was so good, and those boys just put on such a performance that I just. I feel like every now and again, we get a fight like that. I feel like it deserves a special highlight, and um, so that's what that is. That's the when I go home and I just I give me more. I want more. Is is the idea, and so yeah. If I feel that buzz, I'll be making a special highlight on that on a, on a fight in the future, and that'll be part of that series. And yeah, mate, I love it. It's it's completely awesome. And and speaking of that highlight reel, um, uh, we were talking before about like. Obviously, a lot of time gets invested. How how many hours and days did you spend making that five minute highlight reel, just to give people some sort of an idea of of how much effort and time goes into this thing? Because we, as the viewers, only see the finished product, but but knowing 
I couldn't imagine how much time goes into it. Yeah, well, I think that one took me a week. Yeah. Um, so that's a full week's work, you know, 60, 60 hours, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's, I, but it's hard to, to track. This is why I'm really bad it's like, with, you know, quotes and stuff is because I honestly just get into like, uh, I'm not saying I, I'm an, an artist, but if you can imagine someone painting and they just get lot, they get lost in the painting. Yeah. And you know, days can go. They they don't go to sleep, kind of thing. Um, it, the same thing happens to me. I'll stay up all night if the inspiration hits and and work through in, into the morning, kind of thing. So, yeah, that that took me a while, but I feel like it was worth it. We just recently put it on uh, the Rebellion page, and it's got. Two and a half thousand shares, like it's done really well, and I'm really happy because those boys deserved some exposure for that fight. It was awesome. Yeah, dude. And and given that you are filming and yet do get access to all areas, have you ever had anyone not want you to film them, like backstage after a fight, or anyone get pissed off? Um. Well, you know, because I understand the the feelings that are going backstage. Um, I'm pretty respectful, obviously, of yeah. um, the people backstage, and and I, I've, I've won fights and I've lost fights, so I know how they're feeling. Um, obviously, as I get more opportunity at the higher level, I, I haven't been in their shoes. I'm not saying that, but I at least have an understanding of how they're feeling, and so I'm trying my best to be respectful and and. If I don't know the the person, I'm I'm not going to get in their face. Obviously, at their yeah. worst moment, but I do my best um, to get to know the fighters. Um, I train uh, with a lot of the guys. They've I've sparred a lot of the guys and um, even fought some of them. So uh, with those guys that I have a relationship with, obviously I can I can get close at those moments and. And that's where you get the best stuff. I always feel bad, like I'm being a bit biased because I get the best shots of my mates. Yeah. Um, but it's because I can get in those positions. Yeah. You can get the more um, personal and intimate moments, I guess you could say. They'll they'll sort of let you um, film that rather than getting someone that you don't know or barely know, sort of thing. So I, I understand. Exactly. Where you, I understand where you're coming from from there, mate. Um, and and like also. Um, those those people know me, so we've got the relationship. But also, they've seen my work, so they know they they can trust me that yeah. I'm I'm not going to, you know, get their bad side. I suppose I don't know, but like you know, make them look silly. I'm going to be respectful with the finished product as well. Yeah, no, completely get what you're saying there, dude. And if anyone listening to this is looking at venturing into the TV film industry, um or even just from the from the camera side of it, what's some important advice you would give? Well, firstly, just like anything, even uh, kick, like Muay Thai, boxing, everything, it's just you just got to do it, you know. So um, I would just encourage anyone that was interested to start making footage as soon as they can, do whatever you can. Uh, just obviously, if you're going to make stuff on Muay Thai, you're passionate about it. Maybe you're training as well. Maybe in the same situation that I was, you know, you just film your teammates until, uh, you know, or, and then see the opportunities come if they do, you know. Um, so, and then just don't be afraid um, to give it a go. Um, and like everything, it just we're going, we're not going to be great straight away. Uh, in my mind, when I first started. Uh, and today, I, I still can't exactly like I have some something in my mind, and it's difficult to to put it on paper in a way or on the screen. So yeah. um, you, you grow and learn uh, as you go, and and the only way to do that is to keep producing uh, content and and then learning on the way. Yeah, so that's you know. that's actually my motto. Like I I just try my best to make something better than the last one. So. I'll continue to do that and keep learning. Well, mate, if you if you're making stuff better than the last one and you're going to keep making videos, Jesus Christ, the sky's the limit for you, dude. Thanks, mate. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, mate. If people want to contact you, follow you, and watch all your videos, where can they where can they watch that and get a hold of you? Yeah, well, I've made the page the Sentimental Bear, um, so I always reply, and I'm happy to speak to anyone. And and um, so we've got the page there, and also I've started working uh, a lot more for with Sai. So you know, I'll be producing with Sai all that content and. So yeah, definitely get onto that page as well because we'll be making lots of stuff in the future and it's really exciting. So yeah. Are, are you on Instagram as well? Yeah, but it's a personal page. Oh, that's a personal um, one, yeah. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I'll probably get in trouble with the memes. No. Post. <laughs> no, 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 that personal, that, that's fine, mate. I just thought maybe you had a sentimental um, Instagram as well. That's cool. Um, and last but not least, mate, um, anyone you wish to thank or give a shout out to? Oh, definitely. Um, well, firstly, I want to thank my coach. Um, he's uh, an amazing coach, and uh, like uh, an amazing coach, they're not only a great teacher, but they inspire you as well. And he's the one that inspired me to go to Thailand. He showed me, you know, uh, photos of when he went to Thailand back in the seventy, late seventies, and and. Um, he, he he put that inside me, and and uh, you know all, a lot of that would have never happened if it wasn't for him, and and obviously the training stuff as well, and the fights and and all that. He's just been the best coach ever. Uh, so his name's Ed Babalock, and yeah, he's an he's an amazing person. So I'd like to thank him. Um, I want to thank Abigail and PA as well for having me uh, while I was in Thailand last year. They were just so great, and uh, I miss them and. I'm always watching, always thinking of them, and and gonna do my best to get back there as soon as I can. Cause yeah, they're just great, great people down there. Everyone, all the boys at the gym, they're awesome. Um, and then yeah, Sai. I want to thank Sai. He's he's been giving me the pl the platform um, here in Melbourne, and and uh, I'm really really grateful for that. Um, so I'm looking forward to the future with Sai and Rebellion as well. So yeah, thanks very much, everyone. Well, Tom, a.k.a. The Sentimental Bear, I want to thank you for giving us some crazy and awesome uh, goosebumps or goosebumping, whatever you want to call it, um, highlights and, and video captures of, of everyone, dude. And I, I can't speak highly of your work enough, mate, and I'm truly grateful for what you do for our sport. And uh, I appreciate what you do, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have a chat with you and to try and help get, get you out there because I've... I don't just interview fighters, it's it's people involved in the sport and, and you're just as passionate as anyone else. So I really appreciate what you do, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, I love what you're doing as well. So your, your, your aim is the same. We're just trying to give a platform to the awesome sport of Muay Thai and, and show everyone, uh, you know, how awesome it is. And yeah, thank you very much, Mudzi. All right, brother. I, th I appreciate your time.